What's up, a Cinema Shogun here, and every single day people reach out to me asking me to cover this true crime case, or to cover that true crime case. And recently a lot of people have been asking me to cover the Idaho 4 case. But you know, even though I've been doing this for a little over a year now, I still haven't reached the point mentally where covering true crime cases has become routine for me. I don't necessarily know how to explain it, but I haven't reached that point where I just like, you know, I'm going to cover this case, then I'm going to cover that case, then I'm going to wake up and cover this case and that case. I don't know, maybe it's because I haven't been desensitized enough to these type of situations yet. I don't really know what it is. And I'm not saying this to, to make it seem like I'm more virtuous than anyone else. I'm saying this to say that regardless if we acknowledge it or not, Regardless if we even realize it or not, you know, consuming, let's just call it what it is, consuming, constantly consuming this horrible, heartbreaking, sad news has to have some type of effect on you, you know, emotionally and psychologically. That's why I try to balance my content and I'll I'll cover some true crime cases and then I'll also do some pop culture news. Or, for example, when I cover a true crime case, I really go depth in depth on that one case. And I try not to cop, um, hop from case to case. And I try not to cover too many cases at once because that can have an effect on you. Luckily, I found like a perfect counterbalance in my life. Like even though most of my content is talking about sad dark, you know, horrific things. My day-to-day -day life outside of the content I make is totally different. My day-to-day -day life outside of the dark content I make is filled with colorful artwork, tasty tarot boba, um, boba teas, you know, cartoons, lighthearted movies, video games. I, I found a perfect counterbalance to the type of content I make and the type of life I live outside of the content that I make. But yesterday, and I believe the day before, people were reaching out to me asking me to cover a story about a missing seven-year-old girl from Texas or in Texas named Athena Strand. So I started looking into the case, and right away there were some red flags that would make you kind of raise your eyebrow. For one, Athena was sent by her mother to live with her father and her stepmother for a little while. There were talks of there being some type of fight in the family right before Athena went missing. So that was, you know, made everyone kind of on edge. And when you cover or look into enough of these cases, you kind of start going in expecting the worst or Expecting is the wrong word. You go in bracing yourself for the worst because when you cover enough of these cases or when you look into enough of these cases, you know that you have to prepare yourself for the worst possible outcome because in a lot of these scenarios, that's what happens. So you brace yourself for the worst. You hope for the best, but you brace yourself for the worst. But even though I think the majority of us were already bracing ourselves for the worst when it came to this situation. I don't think any of us expected what ultimately turned out to have happened. Um, you know, like I said, there was talks of this fight in the family. We know that uh, Athena's stepmother was the one home at the time. She looked for Athena, couldn't find Athena, eventually called law enforcement. And yesterday, as I was looking into the case, because I was planning on covering the case here today, and I was looking into the case, getting the details about everything that was out there so far, I saw that authorities were searching a particular area. And then rumors started spreading about a FedEx driver. And like I keep saying, when you look into enough of these cases, you kind of get used to things. So you get used to a lot of rumors. You get used to a lot of he said, she said stuff. But this FedEx stuff was like, it, it was like, whoa, 
whoa, are we sure? And then the official report came in, and it turns out that, yes, indeed, a FedEx driver who was going to deliver a package to Athena's home kidnapped Athena from right in front of her home, and it looks like he killed her as well. Um, a completely horrific situation. And it's just like when you think you've seen it all and you've heard it all, a situation like this happens and it makes you reevaluate everything. It makes you almost reevaluate how you live your life. If this could happen to Athena, it could happen to anyone's kids. And we live in a society where we're constantly getting stuff delivered. Everyone, half the people watching this video right now, you will receive an Amazon delivery today, a FedEx delivery, a UPS delivery, you know, Uber Eats, DoorDash. We're at a time in this country where more and more <laughs> delivery drivers that we don't know are popping up at our front doors every day. And then when you see a story like this, it's a complete nightmare. It is a complete nightmare. And I have a lot of thoughts about it. And I have a lot of opinions that I would like to share with you all about this case and about how I think our overall culture here in America has caused things like this to continuously happen. And we're going to get into that in just a moment. But first, I want to hop into this article to give you all a little bit more of a backstory about what's going on here. FedEx driver is arrested in the kidnapping and killing of a seven-year-old girl who went missing outside her home this week. A driver working for FedEx was arrested and charged in the fri charged Friday in the kidnapping and killing of a seven-year-old girl who had disappeared from her home's driveway in Texas earlier this week. A three Athena Strand's body was recovered Friday evening, Wise County Sheriff Lane Atkins said at a news conference. It hurts our hearts to know that child died. It's one of the toughest investigations that I've ever been involved in because it's a child. And anytime there's a child that dies, it just hits you in your heart, he says. Athena was reported missing Wednesday, and authorities launched a search for her across Wise County, located northwest of Fort Worth. Authorities believe the young girl was killed within an hour after her kidnapping from her family's driveway, which is about 200 yards from her home. Tanner Lynn Horner, age 31, is being held in Wise County Jail on capital murder and aggravated kidnapping charges, according to its website. Bond was set at $1.5 million. Horner, identified by authorities as a contract driver for FedEx, was allegedly making a delivery to Athena's home at the time that she disappeared. Earlier Friday, police say they received a tip that helped investigators determine Horner abducted the child from her driveway. Authorities did not indicate a possible motive and said Horner did not know the family or the child. Athena's cause of death remains under investigation and her body has been transferred to the medical examiner's office. I mean... Like I said, a complete horror story. And I know there's a conversation to be had about FedEx and how responsible is FedEx for, for this situation and why didn't they know? Why did they hire someone like this guy whose name I've already forgotten? I don't want to remember this guy's name. I, I honestly, I want us to get to a point where we, we can kind of stop saying these people's names so they stop... So they stop becoming like infamous, you know, members of, of history. But Tanner, people are asking, why did FedEx hire Tanner? Someone who was capable of doing something like this. But when you look into Tanner, you would soon realize that Tanner doesn't really have a criminal background. Usually someone who commits a crime like this one there are signs in their past that would point towards 
them being a horrible, dangerous person. You know, oftentimes people who do these heinous acts, there are other heinous acts that they've committed in their past that would point towards the fact that they were some type of horrible human being. Maybe there was a pattern in the things they do. But with Tanner, he seems to be somewhat squeaky clean as far as his criminal background goes. So, of course, there would have been no red flags there when FedEx decided to hire Tanner. But when you start doing a, a little bit more digging, you will see that there are people out there who have been accusing Tanner of R-wording them for years. I don't want to get too in-depth about this. For one, we can't talk about this topic on YouTube. For two, this isn't my story to tell. And for three, I think we need to figure out more about this whole situation before I can officially report some of this stuff to you all. But there are multiple women online that have come forward claiming that for years they were warning people about this guy, that he R-worded them, and, and for years they were they were warning people and it fell on death, death ears. And I know when it comes to these true crime cases, a lot of times sickos, completely sick and twisted people who have nothing to do with the case, know nothing about the case, are in no way, shape, or form tied to the case. They'll come out with fake stories just to be tied to a case. You know, how often have we heard, oh, I'm a family member of the victim. I'm a family member of this, when in reality, there are nobody that just wanted some attention. But I've done a little bit of digging and looking, and I can see that as far back as I can tell right now, and I will continue to dig, as far back as 2019, people were warning people, other people about Tanner and claiming that Tanner had R-worded them. So even though Tanner does not have a criminal background per se, there is a background there when you look into Tanner because there were these allegations out there and, and women trying to warn people about Tanner and basically saying that Tanner had done horrible things to them, but people basically ignored it. So there were signs out there and there were red flags, but nothing was done about it. And if something was done about what possibly allegedly happened to those girls, then maybe Athena would have never been in harm's way. And that's why we have to take situations like this very seriously. Like with the Jared Lysick situation. People are like, well, don't we live in America? Innocent till proven guilty. Jared Lysick admitted to a lot of the things that he did within an email. We have to take these situations seriously and we have to stop letting predators get away with a slap on the wrist and we have to stop ignoring allegations against people because when you do that, eventually it may lead to something like this. As far as I can tell, it looks as if there were allegations out there about Tanner for a while and maybe if something was done, maybe Tanner wouldn't have been out here on the streets doing what he was doing. Or at the very least, maybe Tanner wouldn't have had a FedEx job. Now, I don't know how FedEx works per se, but I know Amazon, <laughs> literally any, and any anyone can get a job in Amazon and deliver your packages. I have people deliver my packages all the time and they pull up in like random cars, random people. And it's just like, okay, so Amazon trusts you with my, you know, to deliver expensive items to me, okay? And it's like, I have no problem with that. And I'm glad that there are ways for people to make money. But just be aware that literally when you're ordering food off of these apps, and I don't know how every website, I don't know how UPS and FedEx necessarily work, but... Amazon definitely has like independent drivers. You don't have to really necessarily work for Amazon. You just drive to an Amazon warehouse. They will fill your car with packages and send you on your way, despite having no history of ever delivering anything. <laughs> That's how Amazon works. So just be aware of that. But this story really, it really worries me because is this where we're going as a country? In a couple of years from now, will we reach a point where you have to go, hey, kids, it's time to come inside. We have a package on the way. 
hey kids, make sure all the kids in the neighborhood are inside because the UPS man is coming and we don't want any of them kidnapped. Is that where we're going in this country? Hey, you know, it used to be when I was a kid, hey, the street lights are on, come home. But now it's like, hey, the FedEx driver's on the way. Go inside, everyone. We don't want nothing to happen to our kids. Are we going to reach that point in this country? Think about how things have changed since the time you were a kid as opposed to now. When I was a kid, we were still trick-or-treating, going door to door, getting candy. And now kids can't do that in most areas in America. Kids are trunk or treating. Trunk or treating is the stupidest thing I have ever seen or heard of in my life. You go and you'll see a parking lot of like 14 cars there with their trunks open and kids in costume walking trunk to trunk. That's not exciting. That's boring and stupid. But that's where we've come in our society because any and everyone are deathly afraid about what may happen to their kids. Because we all know as a society that we are living in a society that constantly victimizes children. You wouldn't be scared to take your kids trick-or-treating if you didn't already know that you lived in a country <laughs> that has popularized victimizing kids. And now, sadly, but it, it looks like we're going to get to this point where we have to be afraid. When our packages come to our front door, we have to be afraid. Well, I hope my delivery driver isn't a maniac that's going to murder me. I hope my delivery driver isn't someone who's going to kidnap my kids or steal my dog. That's where we are coming in this country. And I've seen people pointing fingers and, well, a demon shouldn't have been outside. A child should be able to step foot outside of their doorway. If your seven-year-old kid is sitting in your living room and sees a package being delivered, they should be able to grab that package from the front door without being, you know, without worrying about the FedEx driver kidnapping them. We keep pointing the blame at, at people like, well, maybe you should have been watching your kid or maybe you should do this, maybe you should do that. Maybe we shouldn't have FedEx drivers out here that kidnap and kill kids. And it, it's the situation has just gradually, and it's almost not even gradually, it's skyrocketing in the direction. Of, it, of, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And then people scratch their heads. Why is this happening? You have things like drag cream, uh, cream, drag queen story hour where drag queens are invited into elementary schools to read books for little kids. And then people scratch their heads. Well, why are our kids being victimized so much? Why are there so many trial predators out here? Maybe because our society is enabling them. Our society is enabling this weird, psychotic, crazy behavior. So therefore, things are only going to get worse. Child predators, people who want to do horrible things to children are emboldened right now because they are protected now more than ever. You have people watching these videos. You have people who claim to be scared about missing kids and these same people offer up their own children to drag queens. Hey, let's go watch a drag show with my six-year-old so they can throw tips inside of a, a grown man's thong who is dressed like a woman. And then you wonder why there are child predators riding around in FedEx cars kidnapping kids because we have emboldened and encouraged this weird psychotic stuff in this society here in America. Point blank period. And I am not scared to have this conversation because until we sit down and start having these conversations, kids are still going to keep getting kidnapped and crazy shit is going to keep happening. I I'm just going to call it what it is. And no, I'm not saying that this is directly tied into each other. But when you ask yourself, how have we gotten here as a society? This is how. This is how. Our, our parent, my parents, your parents, your grandparents, they lived in a totally different world than what we're living in right now. There were, of course, always crazy people, but not at the rate that they're, that they're hard now. Kids weren't being victimized the same way they are now. 
to the point where now you have to live in fear. Parents have to live in fear when their package is on the way. You get a notification to your phone. Oh, our package is three stops away. And now instead of being happy, finally, I'm going to get this item. You have to, oh, oh, are all the kids inside? Is everyone accounted for here? We got to make sure before the FedEx driver pulls up. I don't want to live in a society like this. Because it's only going to get worse. I'm scared to bring kids into this world because of the society that we're currently living in, where it's become popular and even cool to victimize children. And then when tragic things like this happen, everyone scratches their head. How could this possibly have happened? Because we live in a society that encourages child predators to prey on children. And we embolden them. Take a look at what is happening to your kids in the public school system. Take a look around you folks. Until we start having these conversations and still we start changing things within our culture and our society, this is only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. We're going to see more and more parents throwing their kids in dumpsters. We're going to see more and more kids getting kidnapped. We're going to see just our our whole entire society fall into the brink of no return and to just straight madness. And we're heading there at an alarming rate and everyone seems to not be paying attention or they're too distracted by this or they're too distracted by that. Well, now is the perfect time to have this conversation. Because like I said, I'm not ready to live in a society where we have to bring in the whole neighborhood's children and all the kids go inside because the FedEx man is coming. I don't want to live in that society. Do you all want to live in that society? I, I would hope not. So how do we stop that from happening? We stop that from happening by speaking up, by talking, by not being afraid to say what you need to say. We get to this point of total madness and no return. We've gotten to this point because everyone's afraid to talk. Everyone's afraid to offend someone. Everyone's afraid to have those difficult conversations. And because of that, our kids, and I don't have kids, but our kids are being sacrificed at the altar of just evilness, of just straight evilness. So <clears throat> forgive me that I'm so frustrated about this situation, but I just feel like we are reaching a point of no return. And it, it saddens me and it hurts me to my heart that every day we see another story like this one Maybe not quite like this one. This one, you know, it, it's different. <laughs> and it, it kind of pushes the limit once again. You know what I mean? It's like every story you're, you hear, it's worse than the other. And we're just gradually getting to this point where everything just keeps getting worse and keeps getting worse. And everyone's just going to sit around and act like they don't know why. But RIP to this little girl, my heart goes out to her family. I'm going to still look into this situation a little more. I, I don't even want to talk about the dude who did this. I know there's videos out there of him. I know there's different information out there about him. I don't want to even give him the time of day. I hope this guy rots in hell and I hope that he is, oh man, I, I can't even say the things that I hope happened to him in jail. But one thing I can tell you is he did confess to this so this isn't a situation where we're like, okay, we have an arrest, but we don't know if he did it because I see people sympathizing with him. Yes. In this dark, twisted society where everyone's ready to point the finger at everyone, people are still willing to sympathize with child murderers. Why is that? Hmm. Why is that? Why? 
Now, with that being said, I want to know all of your thoughts about this down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up button. Go research what recently happened with Balenciaga. Let me know your thoughts about that as well. Hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.